there thanks for joining me today um today we're creating projects with embossing techniques and there's so many different embossing techniques out there that it's um there's heat embossing there's dry embossing um, there's using our embossing folders um, embossing paste there's all sorts of things out there so um, I wanted to do something I haven't done for ages actually so I thought it would just be a fun little project to do so I'm going to show you um, a little um, background technique and you can use so I'm going to be using three different colors today I've got blackberry bis melon mambo and bermuda bay now um I love this colour combination. It's quite a bold colour combination um, in the sense that they're quite dark colours, but this technique works particularly well with dark colours. So I'm going to start off with Blackberry Bliss and I'm going to be using our blending brushes for this. Um, and I want to just add a really nice dark covering of ink onto my page. So don't be afraid to really sort of... Um, go for it and I'm sorry if I'm wobbling the desk a little bit whilst I'm doing this I do my best not to but I do need to get quite a dark layer down so I'm going to go probably a good sort of nearly halfway down with the darkest colour and then we'll, we'll see you'll see I'll combine the colours together shortly You could use um, direct inked paper, in which case you would just grab your ink pad and scrape it across your, your page. And of course that would give you a really dark colour, um, but it's not always as reliable as blending. So I opted for the blending purely for um, a little bit of um, make sure this works today really. So. So say, don't be afraid to sort of really um, push that colour in, especially these dark ones. Okay, I'm going to leave that like that for the moment because I shall come back with a little bit more of that in a moment. I'm just going to wipe up the worst. You see, I'm working on a glass mat here. Um, this is just my mat of choice. It's great for blending because obviously um, you can wipe it up very, very quickly. So moving on to Melon Mambo, so again I'm just going to pick up that colour. This is a really good technique if you've got a particularly juicy ink pad as well because you can get rid of some of that ink really quickly. And as you can see my Melon Mambo is reasonably new so it is quite, uh, it is quite bold and that, that's fine because that's exactly what I want it to do. I'm just going to blend where the join is. It's not too worried about the join on this because um, you'll see it's going to be sort of quite heavily detailed. So you're not actually going to see the join massively. So don't worry too much. And again, I'll just give that a very quick wipe. And then finally, I'm going to go in with um, Bermuda Bay at the bottom. Uh, Bermuda Bay is not quite so juicy, so I'm going to have to work at this one a little bit. I have got reinkers, so I can always reink my colours afterwards. I always recommend you buy an, a reinker for your colours because although they last an extremely long while, um, they're an absolute godsend for other techniques as well as um, ensuring that your pad is always at top quality. Can you see where that Bermuda Bay is just mixing with that Melon Mambo? We're getting sort of a another sort of purpley sort of colour, which is really nice because it kind of pulls that down from, from up the top there. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. Just going to quickly just blend this in a little bit. Okay, so that's my blending pretty much done. As I say, you don't need to be very precise with your blending with this technique because um, it's more a case of getting the colour onto there and you'll see as we progress sort of how it improves. Okay, so I'll get rid of that wipe now. Okay, so there we are. So that's our base. Now what I want to do is I want to add some water to it to um, try and sort of mix those colours around a little bit, make them quite patchy, um, 
I'm just really going for it really so I've just got um, a water brush I haven't actually got any water in here I'm just using a pot of water and I'm just going to not very carefully splatter some water and I want some bigger pots and I want some smaller pots of water just literally and when I've got quite a lot of colour down I'm just going to do a quick splatter Okay, I'm just going to move that away from where all the water is and again I'm just going to mop up the worst. You can always have a kitchen cloth or whatever just to, especially on the edges because you can see it curls a little bit. Just blot up any excess. Now, under normal circumstances, I would allow this to dry completely um, because I want to emboss it next. But what I'm going to do first, uh, I'm going to take a heat gun to it just to dry off the worst, and then I will allow it to dry a little bit more. So I'm hoping you can hear me over the heat gun, but. It's always best to try and allow these things to dry a bit more naturally, but sometimes um, it's good to speed them up as well because you can move on with your project. So if I was doing something like this, what I'd probably do is do three or four, maybe in different colors, and just allow them to dry fully. I'm just gonna turn it over. So by turning it over, I'm making sure that it's getting dry from both sides. Um, but also what it will do is it will start to help it lay a bit flatter again. Can you see that's just beginning to lay a lot flatter. Okay, so I think that is virtually dry. Um, as I say, I would probably normally leave that just a little bit longer just to naturally dry, but I think the bulk of it is dry. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is bring in my embossing folder. So this one is the... Um, Parisian Flourish 3D embossing folder. Now again, the 3D folders work really well with this technique because they're that much deeper. Whereas when you use a normal embossing um, folder, although they're brilliant, um, obviously they're in, not as deep in their embossing. So that's my folder of choice. So I'm just gonna lay this in here and you'll notice on this particular folder, there is sort of a, a pattern towards the middle of the actual folder so I want to try and get this flower roughly in the middle um, and then I can see that that's that's roughly okay so I'm just going to pop that through my embossing machine so I'm just using the embossing grey embossing plate Okay, so now if I take this out, it's actually quite hard to see. You can't really see massively what is there. Um, I mean, it, it does show up, but it's not showing up as much as I want it to show up. So the next, well, you can see on the reverse how deep it is. It's beautiful. So the next thing I'm going to take is actually a sanding block. So if you haven't got a sanding block, um, you can use just a piece of um, sandpaper or um, the sort of emery type um, these are quite fine so they take a bit longer so I tend to use them a little bit rougher and I'm just going to work my way over the top of my embossed areas and you'll suddenly start to see how the image then starts lifting. Um, now I have used um, just basic white cards 
cardstock. Um, I have opted for the uh, thick one purely because it gives me a little bit more flexibility. I can be a little bit rougher with it. So you just take off as much or as little as you want to. And you can see that beautiful starting to come through. You do get a little bit of dust which I will sort out shortly. Okay, so I'm just going to clear off my desk a little bit again. Again from the dust this time. So there you can see that we've now got this really pretty um, embossed image which is starting to come through. So um, I love the way that looks already, but I also love um, a little bit of um, sort of a bit of a patina to it. So I'm going to add also some gold flakes to it. So again, you can do this a number of ways. It's entirely up to you. You can use um, some kind of background stamp if you want to, to add um, some ink or, or whatever it is you want to do. Um, I'm going to use um, some just some glue today. So I'm going to take um, just a glue pen. So this is just a quickie glue pen, which is like a ballpoint pen, um, but it actually has glue in it. Um, they're just great for add in some little details. Now when you put this down, it actually comes out blue. So what's lovely about it is that you can actually see where you've been. And I'm going to work in little sections on this. I don't want um I don't want it to be a complete covering. I want it to be quite random in lots of respects so that we're just getting a hint of that gold coming through. So I'm choosing to add a little bit of glue just to some of the whiter areas. Um, not all of them because I don't want to lose all that whiteness, um, but you'll see the general idea. So this glue, once it dries, it will dry um, uh, clear um, and it will remain tacky. So that's why it's quite good for this technique. However, if you are using something like um, Tombow or um, some kind of PVA glue, actually I wouldn't recommend Tombow, but some kind of PVA glue, um, it will work okay. So, you know, you can use that as well. So I want to work on this in small areas. So I'm going to be using um, the gold flakes. And what I want to do is I'm just going to pick it up with this brush and rub it over some of the areas where I've been. So I don't want too much. So can you see it's just starting to stick to some of these areas where I have laid the glue. Now I've laid the glue very randomly so it's not going to lay um, like a complete flat covering. That's not what I was trying to achieve. We want it to be quite random and over the top okay so can you see how that's starting to work now I'm going to bring in some more because I can't remember exactly where I went <laughs> if the truth be known okay so again I'm just going to move on with some more so I can get a nice sort of covering but it's not a full covering as I say I just want it to be quite random sometimes it's on the white section sometimes it's on the actual um, colored sections it, you know it's entirely up to you
and then I'm just going to now quite vigorously go over the top with this brush just to remove any loose bits or any bits that sort of can be dusted off. Okay, so that is our background. So I hope you like that. Um, now we just need to make that into a card. Um, I am actually going to add a few more water flecks, I think, on mine. Now that this is dry, um, I'm just going to do some little spots of water because, again, that will just add more texture. And now that brush is nearly dry. So you can see it's just creating some different coloured dots in places. And now that's dry, I'm just going to squeeze a little bit out of my Wink of Stella. Let's give it a quick shake. Make sure I get plenty of... So again, I'm just going to take the brush and I'm going to splatter. Now, you probably won't be able to see this too much on camera, but um, it really adds a beautiful sparkle to everything. Okay. So again, I'm going to leave that to dry and then I'm going to come back and make it into a card. Okay, so now everything has dried um, and I've got all my elements together so we can put our actual card together. So what I've done is I have used a sentiment from the stamp set called Celebrating You. Really brilliant stamp set because it's got so many different greetings for different occasions in it. Um, and I particularly liked this one that says, you're on my mind and in my heart. Um, I just thought that was a really nice sentiment. So what I've done is I have... Um, stamped it in Versamark and then I have heat embossed it in white onto a piece of um, our vellum cardstock and this was using the um, the die from the beautiful shapes um, which is this one here and it has this beautiful embossed line on it so um, just to add a little bit more bling to it what I've done is I've actually used the same glue pen that I used for doing the patina um, but I followed those score lines and then I've I've gold leafed those as well. So it kind of just oh, it brings it all together really. So um, I've got brushed gold cardstock here and then um, a black card base. So I just thought it would be a really nice sort of combination really. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to glue my piece down onto my gold. Now because um, it's obviously um, had water, it's been embossed, it, it's quite... Um, sort of bumpy um, along the way so what we need just need to make sure is that we put plenty of glue that's going to hold it into place especially going on to a foiled background as well because um, obviously they're shiny as well so it's sort of quite notorious for um, <laughs> sort of slipping and sliding around so the bonus of that is it does give us a moment just to kind of get it where we want it to be and just spend a little bit of time just making sure that all those edges are stuck down and then once we know that they're stuck down we know this center part is going to be fine so there we go so that's that now what I want to do is to add um, a little piece of I've taken some of our gold shimmery ribbon um, which I've cut into thin strips so I've basically cut down one side of the ribbon here in fact if I bring the other part in so basically what I've done is this edge that was over here I've just cut it along so it just makes that ribbon just that little bit narrower and what I want to do is I want to put a piece across the section middle section here apologies if you can hear my dogs They're quiet all the time until you start recording, then you can guarantee they'll start kicking off over something. It's like having children, isn't it? 
So I've just stuck a little bit of tape just to the back of either side of that. And what I want to do is I want to sort of have a combination of um, linen thread and of the, the gold. So I've just cut a small piece of each because I don't need a great deal just to go across that middle. And then what I'm going to do is just tuck it behind and hopefully my tape will hold it in place. It's not quite exactly in the middle, but that's OK. I'm quite happy with that. Stick it into place. OK, and then what I want to do is I'm going to attach this next and then I'm going to tie some of this ribbon to one side. So I need to attach this. Um, now, vellum is notoriously bad for um, obviously gluing into place. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to glue my front section onto my base card first because that will make sure it all stays in place. Just trim those off slightly. Just make sure where my top and bottom is. So I've gone for the blue at the top. Now that is my dog, you can definitely hear that one, her little tippy tappy toes. So next thing I want to do is to stick my vellum down. Now vellum is notoriously bad for sticking down, but especially when we've got a, a bumpy textured surface as well, it's not gonna help matters really. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add um, some little dots of glue. So these are like raised dots so that I don't want them too large because obviously they'll squish out, but just where there's like a crossover of the lines, that's kind of where I'm heading for. And then once it's dry, it's not going to worry too much. So I'm going off to one side because I want to tie some thread around the other side. And just gently just trying to push it down onto those sections that I've added the glue to. It might take a few moments just to catch. And then I think I've probably got enough to do two ties here. So I'm going to cut them in half. I'm literally just grabbing them. I'm not going to put them in any order. When you start sort of fiddling around and trying to put things in kind of an order, often that's when you get in a bit of a muddle. So I'm just going to tuck these under here. You can see it's lifted my circle a little bit, but that's fine. I should have probably done those before I stuck the circle down. But it will soon go back down. And then I'm just literally going to tie these into a knot. So obviously I've got a few ends, so I need, just need to take care that I'm not splitting any of those, which is going to happen now I've said it. We're okay. Two and two. So I'm just going to pull those tight. Now you might have to do them kind of individually. And the gold will begin to fray. So don't worry about that. That's fine as well. I'm quite happy for that gold to fray if it wants to. In fact, I might even just encourage it a little. Just sort of adds to it, really. There we go. 
So I'm quite happy with that. I am just going to trim those ends just very slightly just to neaten them up a little bit. I'm quite happy if they're sort of dangling around a little bit. That's fine. I'll just tease some more of that gold out. Just looks pretty when it's sort of frayed out. There we go. So that is how I would use my embossed background. Now, as I say, obviously it works so much better with a dark color underneath because you then get that contrast. Um, whereas if this was sort of a light color, then obviously you don't get that full contrast. So it, it's worth just experimenting with colors. Um, I like the bold colors. It's a little bit out of my comfort zone. So it's quite nice to, to do something a little bit different. So I hope you like that and we'll give it a go. See you soon. Bye.